Welcome into the Original Gangsters podcast, breaking news, quick hitter edition. We're going to go back up to the great white north and shed some context and analysis into this ongoing feud between the Hells Angels and the Rizzuto mob, as we've been calling it here on, on the OG and in Gangster Report. It's a war within a war um, within the, the great Montreal mob war that erupted in the late 2000s at one point. Well, for a long time, the Rizzutos and the Hells Angels were uh, formed an alliance. And in the last couple of years, we've seen that alliance fall apart. And now uh, the two organizations are in a public war with each other. And you have Marty Robert, the top Hells Angel in Montreal, allegedly trying to stage a hostile takeover of the Rizzuto mob. And there's been a lot of questions on where this all came from. Uh, a lot of the reporting started uh in 2023 a little bit in late 22 the assumption was this all kind of had percolated in 22 and broke out in 23 that's not what happened this entire war within a war can trace back to the march 2019 murder of a niagara region hell's angel by the name of dirty diaz michael uh i'm gonna butcher this guy's name but michael diabatru shulvi who went by the nickname Dirty Diaz, was a collector for the Niagara Hells Angels, was working uh, as a part of the Hells Angels, was working in concert with the Rizzuto mob in a big sports gambling operation. It was believed by the Rizzutos that Dirty Diaz was stealing. And without going through proper channels the way that uh, would normally occur in a uh, an alliance of sorts when you have two groups working together they don't really necessarily act autonomously in this case Leonardo Rizzuto the head of the Rizzuto mob took over for his dad miscalculated this it looks it looks like um he decided to put a hit according to my sources he decided to put a hit on Dirty Diaz without contacting the Hells Angels without letting them know that they were going to do some house cleaning. And according to my sources, dispatched a four-person hit team from Montreal to Toronto, to the Toronto area, to assassinate Dirty Diaz. Now, three of those four men in that hit team were convicted of the murder at trial in the winter of 2022. Mark Issa El Curry, the alleged getaway driver in the Dirty Diaz hit, was murdered in retaliation, allegedly, a couple weeks ago, right before Christmas, uh, was murdered leaving a banquet hall in suburban Montreal, gunned down in the parking lot. And it, according to my sources, it was a gift from the Hells Angels and it was a message to Leonardo Rizzuto that uh, we're still hunting you. And uh, you know, old debts are, are being called in, old markers. So it, it looks like everything started to fray in the spring of 2019. And I don't think it broke out into the open until 2022, 23. But we can now trace all of this acrimony between the Rizzuto mob and the Hells Angels after almost 30 years of a partnership, it, it all fell apart in um, a suburb of Toronto in March 2019. Uh, Dirty Diaz was leaving uh, the Huff Gymnasium where he just worked out and he was hit in broad daylight and there was a Ontario police unit doing surveillance on Dirty Diaz because uh, Diaz had come up in the Operation Hobart case. So he had a surveillance unit on him, like 24-7. The surveillance unit watched the hit. Um, it was very brazen, very public. Uh, he was leaving the gym, took fire, ran back into the gym, was screaming for people to call 911, and then eventually uh, took six point-blank shots uh, to the head and neck in the vestibule of that gym. It looks like that hit team had come up, uh, had spent a couple days casing uh, their target. It looks like they had spent almost a month uh, making plans. Uh, his his Jeep, uh, Dirty Diaz's 
a Jeep Grand Cherokee had a tracking device device on it, a GPS tracking device that uh, the hit team had allegedly put on his or put uh, attached to his car about a month before his murder. And I'm told that the blowback, the response from the Hells Angels when they they heard what had happened with with Diaz was uh, they went through the roof uh, and they saw this as a a major sign of disrespect. And it was really the beginning of the end. And I, I think in my, my analysis of this is it, it speaks to how Leonardo Rizzuto doesn't have his finger on the pulse when it comes to doing business and having a relationship that benefits both parties with people like the Hells Angels. Leonardo Rizzuto is more refined than his dad was. Um, his dad was somebody that, although was very polished, very, um, you know, the quintessential mafia Don, but he was somebody that could get along with everybody. Uh, he was a mafia politician and he was able to communicate and do business with the Hells Angels on the level. I'm told that the Hells Angels look at Leonardo Rizzuto and think that he thumbs their nose at him, that he thumbs their nose at them, that he looks down upon them, that thinks that he's better than them, that he's a more sophisticated, better criminal than the Hells Angels. And this has not, this tonality hasn't played well with the Marty Robert group um, and his decision to order a murder of a Hells Angel without the permission of the Hells Angels while in the middle of a alliance that was aiding you. Remember, Leonardo Rizzuto and the Rizzuto Empire was under siege. There was an insurgence. There still is. And the Hells Angels came to their defense. This, this is uh, the fact that you would order a murder of one of the Hells Angels men without going through proper channels without getting the okay, you know, flies in the face of any mutual respect that was uh, afforded before. And the fact that, I'm, like I'm saying, that, that El Curry was acquitted of being the getaway driver, claims that he just happened to be with these guys that decided to carry out a hit and that he had no knowledge of the hit before it was going to take place. Hells Angels call bullshit on that. But, you know, he's living with a... a an X on his back. He was living as a target for, for a good year and a half before they finally got him. Um, and Dirty Diaz was somebody that might have been a younger guy. He was only 32 years old, but Marty knew him. Chick Del Basso knew him, who was an Italian that was working very close with the bikers who eventually got in the middle of this uh, dispute and, and was assassinated back in June. But more importantly, Teflon Rob Barletta, who was one of Marty's top war generals, uh, who was a boss of Hells Angels chapters in London, Ontario, as well as Niagara. He liked Dirty Diaz a lot, and he was incredibly upset by uh, this murder, I'm told. And uh, he, he has been somebody that has not forgotten it and has been in Marty's ear uh, that this has to be avenged. Again, all all alleged all coming from my sources none of this is been proven in a court of law and that uh what happened in december with el curry could be a result of of rob barletta uh wanting to to, to exact personal vengeance on the person that killed dirty diaz or was a part of the team that killed dirty diaz so i just wanted to keep people in the loop here the, the Canadian press, they've talked about the Diaz murder. They've reported on El Curry's murder, but they haven't put all the pieces of the puzzle together. And I just want to contextualize and, you know, emphatically say that all of this craziness in 2022, 23, now into 24, can be traced back to the spring of 2019 and the murder of a Hells Angel uh, Niagara chapter enforcer named Dirty Diaz. We will keep you updated with all the most uh, breaking news up in the Great White North when it relates to this war within a war. I'm Scott Bernstein, OG Pod out.